Welcome to Power Coat Music. In this presentation, we're going to do a quick overview of the Behringer Composer MDX 2600 two channel compressor with the Esser. Now, put simply, compressors are powerful audio effects that are required in order to take your productions to the next level. They're often mysterious, misunderstood, and misused by many. So let's review what a compressor really does before we jump into this product overview. By doing this, hopefully this presentation will make more sense to those who are interested and who struggle with the concept of a compressor. Now, a compressor works to reduce the dynamic range of a recording by lowering the audio levels of the loudest sections. This means that the loudest and the quietest sections of the recordings are moved closer together in volume, making the differences in audio volume less noticeable. After the audio signal is compressed by the unit, a compressor can then boost it. Now the impact of this is that the quietest sections become boosted, which brings them closer to the loudest sections. As a result, it's easier to control the dynamic range of an audio recording, which lets you better manage how individual tracks sit inside your final mix down. With this, you might think, well, that's great, but how else can I use a compressor in my studio? Well, here are 10 of the most common ways that you can do that. Number one, decreasing an audio signal's dynamic range to accommodate a specific recording with a more limited dynamic range. Number two, increasing a guitarist's sustain. Number three, smoothing out bass sounds for a more consistent level. Number four, preventing peaks common in many source signals like drums from overloading a signal during recording. Number five, evening out a vocalist dynamics to compensate for poor mic vocal technique. Number six, in live applications, limiting can increase a vocalist level before feedback occurs. Seven, reducing sharp signal peaks associated with some signal processors and synthesizer patches. Eight, use the noise gate to key one instrument's rhythm to another instrument. Nine, use the side chain to remove excessive hissing from vocals and from narration. This is commonly known as de-essing. Last but not least is 10, in which you can use the side chain for lowering background music or other program material in narration. This is commonly known as ducking. In this overview, we're going to check out the Behringer Composer MDX2600 compressor with the Essers, features, technical specifications, front panel controls, and back panel section. First, it's important to understand that Behringer makes two different models of compressor that are the same retail price. They are first, the Behringer Composer MDX2600 compressor with the Esser. This is a two channel unit and it is the focus of this presentation. The unit retails for $159 new. The second is the Behringer Multicom MDX4600. Now this is a four channel compressor and this unit also retails for $159 new. Now, let's check out the Behringer Composer MDX2600 compressors features. The unit has a switchable IKA program adaptive compression circuitry, which combines the advantages of hard knee and soft knee characteristics. Now, to give you an idea of what that means for those who are unfamiliar, with hard knee compression, the gain reduction applied to the signal occurs as soon as the signal exceeds the level set by the threshold. Now with soft knee compression, the onset of the gain reduction occurs gradually after the signal has exceeded the threshold. Now this can produce a more musical response or, you know, uh, sound to some folks. 
Moving on, the unit also has an integrated de with switchable male-female voice recognition, which I think is really cool that it can distinguish, or at least try to. It also has an IGC, uh, peak limiting circuitry uh, function, which combines clipper and program limiter for more inaudible protection against signal peaks. It also has a switchable dynamic enhancer, along with an IRC expander gate for noise suppression. The unit also has a switchable tube simulation so that you can simulate the uh, classic sound of a tube, which could be really nice. You can automatically or manually adjust the attack and release times as well. And it also has a switchable low contour filter, which prevents pumping due to low frequency dominated compression. The unit also has a stereo couple function with independent output level settings and a switchable side chain input with a monitor function. The unit has separate 12 segment LED features for input and output levels and gain reduction. And also it has a traffic light type of threshold and de uh, level display. The unit also has servo balance inputs and outputs and a relay controlled hard bypass switch with auto bypass function in case you lose power. We'll move on to the Behringer Composer MDX2600 compressors technical specifications. What I did is I went to Behringer and I pulled down all of the detailed specifications about this unit. The reason why I did that is because people ask a lot of questions about it and I wanted to make sure I had all of the information that I possibly could for the unit in one spot for you so that you didn't have to go anywhere else to get it. So on your screen now we have the back of the unit and we'll start with the first section which is the audio input section. The type of audio inputs we have here are XLR and quarter inch TRS connectors which are servo balance. Below that, we have the impedance operating level, max input level, and CMRR specifications and more. Next, we have the audio outputs. And the type here are XLR and quarter inch TRS connectors, which are servo balance, along with the impedance and max output specs. Below that, we have the side chain inputs. The type are quarter inch TRX unbalanced, and we have the impedance and max input level specs. Below that, we have the side chain outputs. The type are quarter inch TRS un, uh, connectors, which are unbalanced. And we have the specifications, which, are, which cover the impedance and max output level. Moving on, we have the system specifications. When, in this section, we have the frequency range, the signal to noise ratio, total harmonic distortion, and the crosstalk specifications. Next, we have the expander gate section. The type is an IRC, and we cover the threshold, ratio, attack, and release specifications. By the way, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause the presentation and check out the detailed specifications. Moving on, we have the compressor section. The type of compressor is an IKA, and we have the threshold, ratio, attack, and release, the manual attack time and release times, the auto char characteristics, the auto attack time, auto release time, and the output. Moving on, we have the peak limiter section. The type is an IGC, and we have the level attack release specifications here. Moving on, we have the dynamic enhancer section. The type is an IDE, and we cover the filter frequency characteristic and the boost specifications. Below that is the de section, or de section, I should say. The type is a VAD, a voice adaptive de -ser. And we have the filter frequencies, filter bandwidth, and level reduction specifications. Last but not least, we have the power supply specs along with the unit's dimensions and weights. Let's look at the Behringer Composer MDX2600 compressors front panel controls. We'll start with the couple switch. What this does is it links the channels. 
In couple mode, dynamics are controlled by using channel 1 switches and controls, whereby the control signal is derived from the energy of both side chain channels, which gives you true stereo processing. Next we have the trigger control. In the expander gate section, this determines the threshold below which expansion sets in, so that the signal below the threshold are reduced in gain. The setting range is from off to plus 10 decibels. Now if the signal below the adjusted level is applied, the red LED lights up. If the signal gain is above the adjusted value, the green LED lights up. Let's move on to the release switch. This determines a short or long release time. And give you, to give you an example, percussive material with little to no reverb at all is usually processed with a shorter release time. That is when the switch is not pressed. The long release time is best, or should I say the best choice for slowly decaying uh, a signal or signals with heavy reverb. That is when the button is pressed. Let's move on to the gate switch. This allows you to toggle between the expander when it's not pressed and the gate function when it is pressed. Next is the threshold control. Now you use this to adjust the compressor's threshold from negative 40 to plus 20 decibels. Next, the three LEDs indicate whether the input signal is above or below the adjusted compressor threshold. The yellow LED in the middle refers to the IKA or soft knee range. Next, when you activate the SCEXT switch, this interrupts the link between the signal input and the compressor control section. At the same time, an external control signal can be fed in via the rear panel sidechain return jack. Now, what this when this happens, this takes over control of the input signal dynamics reduction. Next we have the SC MON switch. This links the side chain input signal to the audio output which mutes the audio input signal. Next we have the ratio control. Now this determines the ratio of input versus output level with regard to all signals exceeding the threshold by more than 10 decibels. Next, we have the 12 digit gain reduction display. This informs you about the current gain reduction that's applied. Next, we have the low contour switch. What this does is it activates a high pass filter in the side chain path and avoids the pumping effect caused by high energy base frequencies and their influence on the whole compression process. Next, we have the attack control. This determines when the compression sets in once the signal has exceeded threshold. After that, we have the interact knee switch. This changes from hard knee to IKA characteristics. Or should I say this changes from hard knee to IKA characteristics. I just said that. Well, the input signal exceeds the threshold by up to 10 decibels. Um, when it does, it will be processed with a soft knee characteristic. If it's above a 10 decibel control characteristic, it changes from soft knee to a more conventional hard knee compression. Next, we have the auto switch. This disables the attack and release controls and derives these time values automatically from the program material. After that, we have the release control. Now, this sets the time when the original one to one gain is reached and after the signal has dropped below the threshold again. After that, we have the tube switch. What this does is it enhances the output signal with a warm, or should I say a more warm and transparent tonal characteristic that's typically produced by electronic tubes. Next, we have the output control. What this does is it raises or lowers the output signal by a maximum of 20 decibels. It works to make up for gain losses that are caused by the compressor or limiter action. You can raise the gain by roughly the same amount that it has been reduced by the compressor. Next, we have the in-out meter switch. This selects whether the gain LED uh, read the input signal, uh, which when the switch is not pressed, or if the output signal, or the output signal, I should say, when the switch is pressed. 
Next is the in out switch. This activates the related channel. It also serves as a direct AB comparison between unprocessed and compressed limited signals. Next is the enhancer switch, which activates the dynamic enhancer. This boosts the treble only during compression to give a more natural frequency balance. After that, we have the level control, which determines the amount of frequency suppression. Next, we have the deesser level. The LED chain reads the current attenuation within a range from plus 3 to plus 12 decibels. After that, we have the male switch. This adapts the deesser to the male, that is, when the switch is pressed, or the female registers when it's not pressed. After that, we have the in-out button switches. This turns the deesser on and off. Now, here's a point of note. The deesser can only function while compression is being applied, so keep that in mind. Next, we have the peak limiter. This keeps the signal to an adjustable level. Now, when the limiter control is turned fully to the right, the limiter is switched off. If the signal is limited for more than 20 milliseconds, the overall gain is reduced for about one second to avoid strong and audible limiter effects. Last but not least is the limit LED. This lights up as soon as the limiter is on. Finally, let's check out the Behringer Composer MDX2600 compressor's back panel controls. The first item we have to the left is the mains or power cord connection. Next are the audio outputs of the unit. The two matching quarter inch TRX and XLR connectors are wired in parallel and are balanced. Unbalanced cables can also be connected as well. Next we have the operating level switch. Now this can be used to adapt the MDX2600 to various operating levels. You can toggle between home recording level, which is, you know, negative 10 dBV, and studio level, which is plus 4 dBU. Next are the audio inputs. They're also balanced quarter inch TRS and XLR connectors. After that, we have the sidechain SIN, which is an unbalanced sidechain output, which allows you to route the audio signals to other devices for external processing. Last but not least is the sidechain return input. This allows you to use an external signal or the process audio signal routed from the sidechain send jack to control the unit. Well, my friends, that's a wrap. If you like this presentation, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every seven to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Also, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know what you think about this content. Check us out also on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and TikTok. Now, while you're here, listen to some of the music and check out some of the videos and especially the playlists because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.